Hello, welcome to Puffs and Poetry. I'm your host, Jessica, a writer, cannabis aficionado, and poetry lover. Today's episode of Puffs and Poetry is sponsored by Fat Nugs Magazine. Fat Nugs Magazine is an independent cannabis publication that celebrates the culture and the tradition of cannabis and the people who consume it. It's a publication that I am proud to be a part of. The issue that's on the shelves right now has an article of mine on CBD, talking about why I love CBD and how to create your own type 2 blends. They have another issue coming out soon after this video is released. To thank Fat Nugs for sponsoring today's video, I will be rolling up on their magazine instead of my usual rolling tray. Today I am rolling a joint that has both CBD and THC in it. And I do this fairly often. I do this because while I love THC, too much of a good thing is too much. And when I consume too much CBD, when I consume too much THC and not enough CBD, I'm not functional. And that's not always a bad thing for Friday nights or the end of a long day where I need to take the edge off. But in the middle of a day or when I'm smoking to get things done, I need to remain functional. And that's where I find CBD pulls a lot of weight. I am rolling up with some mm, delicious smelling tropical cherry THC and some CBD that I harvested myself a couple years ago. This joint has a small amount of THC compared to the amount of CBD in there. Enough to make me feel it, enough to help me get elevated, but not so much that after this I won't be able to get on with my day. And that's the key to mindful cannabis consumption, is figuring out how to consume in a way that supports your life and your goals, whatever those may be. This is the part where I really have to concentrate if I don't want to lose the entire thing. Beautiful. I also have with me today this nifty little joint tip from Widgets. Sometimes I roll joints that are too small to fit in the joint tip, but sometimes they fit well. And I just check by putting it upside down before I light it on fire. Today we are reading from a book of Mary Oliver poetry called A Thousand Mornings. This book was published in 2012 and contains some of my absolute favorite absolute favorite Mary Oliver poems. Mm. I had some herbs blended into the CBD before I rolled it and they just add such a beautiful flavor and taste. If you've never tried adding smokable herbs to your roll, I highly recommend it. All right, our first poem today is called I Go Down to the Shore. I go down to the shore in the morning. And depending on the hour, the waves are rolling in or moving out. And I say, oh, I am miserable. What shall, what should I do? And the sea says in its lovely voice, excuse me, I have work to do. challenge to smoke and read at the same time without coughing so if you can do it more power to you our next poem is called I happened to be standing I don't know where prayers go or what they do 
Do cats pray while they sleep, half asleep in the sun? Does the opossum pray as it crosses the street? The sunflowers, the old black oak growing older every year? I know I can walk through the world along the shore or under the trees with my mind filled with things of little importance, in full self-attendance, a condition I can't really call being alive. Is prayer a gift or a petition or does it matter? The sunflowers blaze, maybe that's their way. Maybe the cats are asleep, maybe not. While I was thinking this, I happened to be standing just outside my door with my notebook open, which is the way I begin every morning. Then a wren in the privet began to sing. He was positively drenched in enthusiasm. I don't know why, and yet, why not? I wouldn't persuade you from whatever you believe or whatever you don't. That's your business. But I thought of the wren singing, what could this be if it isn't a prayer? So I just listened, my pen in the air. One of my favorite things about Mary Oliver's poems is <clears throat> thematically she finds spiritual fulfillment in nature so often. She can cultivate what is akin to a religious experience in nature. And I love both the sentiment and the actuality of that. The sentiment of releasing our internal, internal turmoil to the natural world, but also the actuality of remembering that we are part of the world. Our next poem is called Lines Written in the Days of Growing Darkness. And to all of my friends in the Northeast and the Northwest who are in the midst of winter right now, this one is for you. Every year we have been witness to it. How the world descends into a rich mash in order that it may resume. And therefore, who would cry out to the petals on the ground to stay, knowing as we must how the vivacity of what was is married to the vitality of what will be? I don't say it's easy, but what else will do if the love one claims to have for this world be true? So let us go on cheerfully enough this and every crisping day, though the sun be swinging east, and the ponds be cold and black, and the sweets of the year be doomed. I'm really keeping this one lit by the skin of my teeth. What I love about this poem, um, Mary Oliver lived in Massachusetts for much of her life, so she was privy and a part of the seasonal swings that happen every year. And it is, it can be such a depressing time the, the transition between fall and winter when the colorful leaves are gone, it's just brown sticks and brown mud and gray skies. But as she presents in this poem, it is necessary. It is a necessary transition. It is a necessary change. She calls it the world descending into a rich mash. And as it is snowing very heavily outside my windows right now, I can love and appreciate that. I also have two lines highlighted in this poem that are particularly um, of particular note to me. How the vivacity of what was is married to the vitality of what will be. How what was is wonderful and beautiful, but what will be is alive. It's just one of those lines that sticks out to me. Our next poem is called Life Story. When I lived under the black oaks, I felt I was made of leaves. When I lived by Little Sister Pond, I dreamed I was the feather of the blue heron left on the shore. 
I was the pond lily, my root delicate as an artery, my face like a star, my happiness brimming. Later, I was the footsteps that follow the sea. I knew the tides, I knew the ingredients of the rack, I knew the eider, the red-throated loon with his uplifted beak and his smart eye. I felt I was the tip of the wave, the pearl of water on the eider's glossy back. No, there's no escaping. Nor would I want to escape this outgo, this foot loosening, this solution to gravity in a single shape. Now I am here. Later I will be there. I will be that small cloud, staring down at the water, the one that stalls, that lifts its white legs, that looks like a lamb. Ah, there's no saving at this time. I can feel it getting looser in the joint tip too, so we'll just put that back. It's nice to have a joint holder because it keeps your hands from getting all smoky and resiny, but it can also make it harder to smoke sometimes. This poem I love, um, it's, there aren't any stanzas, it's just one paragraph, but I love it for the last couple lines. There's no escaping, nor would I want to escape this outgo, this foot loosening, this solution to gravity and a single shape. 1,000 Mornings, 8,000 Mornings was published in 2012. Mary Oliver died in 2019, but her first book was published in 1963. 63. So she wrote poetry all of her life, and this book was one of the ones published closer to her death. So you see throughout her poetry the way her musings and her meditations on death change. And I just think it's a particularly beautiful way to describe death that she uses here. The solution to gravity in a single shape. Now I am here, later I will be there. <clears throat> Our last poem today is called Varanasi. Early in the morning we crossed the Ghat, where fires were still smoldering, and gazed with our western minds into the Ganges. A woman was standing in the river up to her waist. She was lifting handfuls of water and spilling it over her body slowly and many times, as if until there came some moment of inner satisfaction between her own life and the river. Then she dipped a vessel she had brought with her and car then she dipped a vessel she had brought with her and carried it filled with water back across the gap, no doubt to refresh some shrine near where she lives. For this is the holy city of Shiva, maker of the world, and this is his river. I can't say much more except that it all happened in silence and peaceful simplicity in something that felt like the bliss of a certainty and a life lived in accordance with that certainty. I must remember this, I thought, as we fly back to America. Pray God I remember this. Those are all the poems that I have for you today. Thank you for joining me. This joint is getting out of control. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Puffs and Poetry. Thank you to our sponsor, Fat Nugs, and I highly encourage everyone to check out both their print publication and their digital content as well at fatnugsmagazine.com. Thank you so much. Be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and have a wonderful day.